Here we're going to have a look at a really interesting phenomena called polarization, uh, specifically plane polarization, and also how this phenomena only applies to transverse wave. It doesn't apply to longitudinal waves. Um, so we'll start off with this sketch. What I've got here is, um, imagine over here at the bottom left, we've got the source of some waves, and they're then traveling up towards the top right. So these arrows are indicating the direction of motion of the waves. So you can see as they travel along here, they're oscillating up and down and left or right along here. And then we've got some screens here that are acting as filters that we'll discuss in a moment. So this could be any sort of transverse wave, but it's, um, the easiest example is to think of it as some sort of light. So if this was a light source, like a LED maybe, or a filament lamp, or whatever you like, um, then it emits light. And as that light comes off, it's not polarized. These directions of oscillation, some of them will go left to right, some of them will go up and down, some of them will go sort of diagonally, all sorts of directions. So what we get coming off of here is just a massive jumble of up and down, we get left to right, we get diagonally that way, we get diagonally that way, we get everything in between. So we get the light going up and down and all over the place. So each of the, we get many, many rays coming off here, and there's no particular order to the way that they're coming out of this light source. And so that's what we refer to as unpolarized. So down in this region, we are unpolarized. And then we're passing through here what we call a polarizing filter. So here we imagine this way, this filter has got a vertical slit. And so the only waves that can pass through are those which are oscillating up and down and up and down. Anything else is going to get blocked. So if we imagine this red wave trying to move forwards, we can see it's going to end up hitting the filter and can't get through. And so this polarizing filter only allows oscillations in one direction to pass through the filter. Um, and that one direction, because we're going up and down in that direction and moving forwards, we can imagine this tracing out a plane. And so we refer to this as plane polarization. So we start unpolarized, and then after we've passed through the filter, we become plane polarized. Uh, Americans tend to spell this with a Z, by the way, uh, or Z if you're going full-on American, um, but us British spell it with an S. So this is basically all that polarization is. We, we have an unpolarized wave that's got its oscillation directions in all sorts of directions, and then uh, after we pass through some filter, uh, so this might be some uh, polarizing filter, we become polarized, so we oscillate only in given direction. Um, so from this we can see why this has to be a transverse wave. So we can label this uh, also as transverse. Um, if this was longitudinal, then as we travel along here, the only direction that the longitudinal wave oscillates is along the direction of motion. So we would oscillate back and forth, back and forth, back and forth as we travel along here. So there is only one direction of oscillation already. With the transverse wave, because we can oscillate up and down or left and right or diagonally, we can use the polarizing filter to pick one of those directions. So we can go from unpolarized, we can say, let's force it to pick, uh, let's filter out and pick out just one of the directions. Whereas with the longitudinal, we've already only got one direction. We can only ever have one direction of oscillation, and that is along the direction of motion. So that's why this polarization can only apply to the uh, transverse waves, not to longitudinal waves. Uh, so let's have, uh, uh, let's have a look at this one first. So we said just now how we can use a filter to pick out the particular polarization of the wave. And what we've got here is two images. Uh, one has been taken with a polarizing filter, and one has been taken not with a polarizing filter. So this one on the left is unfiltered. Uh, 
and this one is filtered. So in front of the camera lens uh, we've got no filter here so just open and here we've got a polarizing filter so this filters out certain polarizations of light and what you can see is a big difference here you can see over here we've got this sort of uh, mass of water falling into this gully and it's quite bright so we've got reflections from the sun which uh, is outside the frame and they're hitting the water they're bouncing and they're coming into the camera over here we lose all of that glare, all of the reflections. We can still see the water, but we can't see the reflections anymore. And so in addition to using filters to polarize light, uh, when we undergo reflection, when light reflects off of surfaces, it also tends to become partially polarized, um, or sometimes entirely polarized under certain circumstances. So by partially polarized, I mean that rather than going to purely up and down, We've gotten rid of most of the other ones, so the majority of the light is up and down or in a particular direction, but there's still a little bit of other uh, directions in there as well. Uh, and so this is why sunglasses work best if they're polarized. So um, if you imagine instead of this being reflections off of uh, the water, this might be reflections off of a road or windows or other cars. And so in bright sunlight, these reflections can be quite dazzling. By wearing polarized sunglasses, what we see is something more akin to what we have on the right-hand side. Uh, so we cut out all of that glare, but we can still see everything that's there when we wear polarized sunglasses. Um, this is a crystal called uh, calcite, and this exhibits a very interesting behavior. So previously we've had a look at refraction where we saw it's the bending of light as it travels from one medium to another. So here we've got a calcite crystal which is clear. So light is traveling from the air into the crystal and as it does so it will bend. But this calcite has a very interesting property in that different polarizations will bend by different amounts. So you can see we've had unpolarized light instant upon this crystal. And then the polarization which might be say uh, up and down has come out uh, so we've got up and down might be this one and then the ones that are going side to side have come out this way and that's because the structure inside the crystal is slightly asymmetric and so it doesn't treat the light completely uniformly light oscillating in a particular direction along the crystal um, gets bent by different amounts so we have this different amount of refraction depending on the polarization of the light. Yeah. Coming back to this image for a moment, uh, we've got this second filter which we haven't discussed yet. So this second filter we've put perpendicular to this first filter. And so having filtered out this unpolarized light into plain polarized light, we've then got another filter at right angles perpendicular at 90 degrees to this first filter and we can see that is blocking all of the light. So when we've got this plain polarized light, it prevents this light from passing through it because the direction of the filter is at 90 degrees to the direction of the polarization. If it's anything other than exactly 90 degrees, some of this will still just about get through. If it's uh, in the right direction, all of it will get through. If it's at 45 degrees, we get um, portion of it getting through as we go closer and closer to perpendicular we get less and less of it. And we can actually do some relatively straightforward calculations to work out exactly how much of the light gets through uh, a filter depending on the angle between the direction of the polarization and the direction of the filter. And we'll look at that in a separate video.